Hello, pilots of the internet. If you're watching this video on YouTube, know that the third episode of Road to World Record is available to my patrons on patreon.com slash foldable flight. And it features the glider version of this plane, which is the best distance glider I have ever published. So if you want access to that, head over there and support the channel. And with that, let's get into the video. In this episode of Road to World Record, we're gonna be talking about darts, gliders, and hybrids, and which one's best. Which one of these is most equipped to fly the greatest distance and hopefully break that world record of 226 feet and 10 inches? Now you can see here, I have three different versions of a similar plane. This is the one that was featured in the first Road to World Record video. And here we have two different versions of that plane. One is a hybrid, one is a glider. There are obvious advantages and disadvantages to these three designs, to darts and gliders and hybrids in general, and I figured we'd break out that whiteboard to talk about what those are. These black lines represent the ground, and I'm gonna draw out some uh, flight paths for these planes. So if a dart is generating no lift at all because its wings are so narrow, it would fly in a literal parabolic trajectory. And that's like if you threw a baseball, you know, it literally just follows an arc. It doesn't generate any lift at all. Now, actually, most dart paper airplanes generate a little bit of lift, so they don't fly actually like that. They fly more like this. You can see there's a slight bow in the curve here where it is generating a lot of lift when it's flying very quickly. The wings have to move very quickly to generate enough lift for the plane to climb up like that. And then somewhere along the flight path, the plane peaks, and then it kind of just dives down into the ground. It doesn't go much farther after that peak. A hybrid will have a more pronounced bend like this, maybe not quite that pronounced, but you know, maybe that pronounced, and then do something very similar. A glider has a unique advantage over both of those where it really climbs steeply, peaks, dives, doesn't crash, and has the potential to level out again before crashing into the ground because the speed at which it descends is not that fast, but that's fast enough due to the size of the wings for it to generate enough lift to level out. And that's the difference. And that's really what works in favor of Suzanne, the current world record holder. It's a glider and it follows this kind of flight trajectory. So you might say a glider is the best path and, and you might be right. But while that advantage exists for gliders, there is an advantage for darts. Their smaller wings mean that they generate much less drag, which means that they maintain the initial momentum of the throw much longer and they fly faster than the glider does and, and potentially farther as a result. So then we have this interesting middle ground of hybrids. And actually I kind of feel like hybrids they're not the best of both worlds. This is my impression. I think hybrids kind of have the problem of each. They have the excess drag that a glider has, and they don't ever, at least in my experience, level out before hitting the ground after this peak. So why in this video am I teaching you how to fold hybrid of all things? And that's just because my biases aside, this is the farthest flying version of this plane that I've designed so far. While I may not be pursuing hybrids for very long, this is where we are today in this video. And with that all in mind, let's see it in flight and I'll teach you how to fold it. In order to fold this plane, you'll need an A4 sheet of paper and a ruler. And we're going to begin by folding the right edge to the left edge. Okay, and I'll open that up. And now you wanna fold the top two and a half centimeters down. I've already marked this with a line. You'll wanna break your ruler out for this. 
the measurement is important. And now I'll flip the paper over and fold your top edge into the center crease. And now fold the same or do the same thing on the other side. And when your paper looks like this, just fold the whole top section along this edge down and land your center crease or your point on the center crease. And now I want you to imagine this. So look at this angle here between the center crease and this top edge. That's actually a 90 degree angle. And I want you to imagine dividing it into three equal parts and where those lines land. You know, this isn't a great drawing. These aren't three equal parts, but imagine that they are perfect. Basically, you're going to be folding this top edge in and your crease should land on this first line dividing the first third and the second third and your edge would land on this third line or this the second line dividing the second third and the third third. But you do also want to start your crease a little bit off center. Just leave a little gap there because you're going to be folding in again. And a way you can kind of assess whether you're placing your crease in the right place is look at this edge. If the space between this edge and that center crease is the same as the space between this edge and the edge you're about to form, then you're folding in the right place. So it should be something roughly like this. And we'll go ahead and just test by rolling this in and folding to center. And so it'll look like this and you're just going to unfold and you're going to use, and you can see that wasn't perfect. This edge is not on that crease and that's fine. We're good here as long as I could roll in and not go past the center crease. With the paper in this position, I'm now going to fold it in half and fold my other side to match the first side. So I'm just looking for that edge and folding this to land right on top of that. And now I'll fold this side in like so and this side in to match the first side. Okay, and your plane should look like this. And we're now going to open each side up and now fold this outer edge here in the land about on that crease, but leave a little gap. Like so. Do the same thing on the other side. And now you'll see if I start folding the whole paper in half here, so we're going to be folding the paper in half this way. Pull this little pocket open slightly. And as you fold in half, you can see that pocket swing back. And that's going to be the pocket that we tuck these layers into. So you kind of have to prep those layers like so. And as you close the paper up, you can tuck them in as this point goes back. It's very awkward to have to do it this way because they don't fit until the paper's totally closed shut. But also it's very hard to do it once the paper already is closed shut. So you kind of have to improvise, kind of curve the paper as you do this, but you should be able to roll everything into place and try to make sure that your two sides remain equivalent. It's easy to kind of get your paper rolled into a weird shape where your center crease isn't really on the center of the bottom of the paper. So you can see I'm kind of just rolling and trying to make sure that that is in the center. And then I lie my paper flat. And now I'm going to fold from this point here through the back corner of this pocket, that top point right there. That's what I'm looking for as I fold. So it'll be something just like that. And we end up with fairly wide wings here. Once you do one side, just flip it over, fold the other side to match.
And now we're going to do just one last thing and that's set the paper down like this and really smooth out the wings. And there you go. You may need a little bit of up elevator with this one, uh, but you can go ahead and test your plane first. If you do find that the plane is diving slightly, just bend the back edges up a little bit and good luck flying your plane. A reminder, if you are watching this video on YouTube, there is a video on Patreon that shows the next iteration of this design. So consider becoming a patron and getting access to that content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.